uh, Easter Monday, like, you know, like, you know, instead of spending time with your family, like, we actually have to come out here and to protest against the carbon tax that's been, like, you know, introduced today. Like, there are a few speakers that's coming up today, and the most important that we have the leader from the BC United, Kevin Falcom, and the BC Conservative, John Rasta, coming here. Thank you so much that you know for coming in. That you know we need politicians like this to listen to us. Unlike the one that's in Ottawa or the David E. V. Right in Victoria, that they don't hear us even though they have ears, and they will pretend blind and that you know even they have an eye. I want to say is like you know what happens today is. It's an insult to our democracy. Like, look at the protest that is happening today. We are not the only one that's protesting. There are protests in Ottawa, Alberta, and even in BC. We have one later in Nanaimo for BC Conservative. Pierre Poly is going to be present. And while we speak, there's also a rally of truckers who protesting the carbon tax from Lenny to Hope. So. As we stand up here today, like I don't call this a protest because for protest we're looking for solutions. But today we actually bring solution to you guys. Thank you, John and Kevin and the parties that stand behind you guys. You guys will be the solutions for us. And today I want you to have this chance to get close to the representative who's going to be representing you in your writings and like you know have your say. Like talk to them face to face and get to know them instead of just a name on the ballot. I have a few uh, house rules. I just want to make sure, like, uh, like the crowd, we don't block the the sidewalks because this is a, a specific request from the city. And uh, before we leave, right, please pack up our garbage, okay, just to be a, a nice citizen. Okay. We have a few uh, speakers before Kevin and John speaks today, and the first one I want to introduce you is Angela Hare. is a commissioner with City of Vancouver, and is also running the you know seek for nomination for Federal Conservative Party. Please, Angela, Yay! come up. Well, thank you for this. I wasn't expecting to speak, but I am so happy that you invited me to come up and say a few words on um, behalf of the Conservative Party of Canada. I am seeking nomination in the Vancouver Granville area. And um, like many of you guys here, I am concerned about where our economy is going. And yes, it's not an April Fool's joke. The carbon tax is going up and it's affecting our livelihoods, affordability, and what's going to happen with our future. I'm not going to say too much, I just want to share a small story, uh, an experience that I had about a month ago with my grade 12 son, who's graduating, graduating with honours. He's already gotten into the universities in, in Canada. What broke my heart mostly was, he said, Mom, I'm going to go to university here in Canada. Yes, I will go to university, I will do a couple of degrees, but I will not be staying in Canada. I think I'm going to move to Dubai. I was like, what? Dubai? Why would you move to Dubai? And he's like, Mom, look what's happening. I cannot afford anything here. No matter how much money I might be making, I might not be able to afford a house. And it actually broke my heart. So on that note, I am so happy you guys are here out and, and, and getting educated. And I hope everyone will be voting and getting more aware of what's happening municipally, federally, and provincially especially, and, and practicing your constitutional right to vote. If you guys don't get involved, if the common person doesn't get involved, nothing's going to change in the future. And that's an issue. So thank you very much for coming out today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. Okay, so besides carbon tax, there's actually other issues that our provincial government have been doing, that, you know, without thinking. Like, I would say two months ago, I was standing 
just right across over here from the city hall, put us in my first time, you know, since I immigrated here 30 years ago, about the injection site issue. Okay, this is actually the first time I, like, you know, over like more than 30 years, I actually have to went out and doing a protest because before the politician, what they were doing, it's like, you know, it's not like, you know, I don't feel any concern at all. Because, like, you know, we think as Asian, like, you know, I'm an Asian descent. Like, Asian family usually thinks politics is really far from us. Whatever they do, they don't affect us. Like, you know, even like four years ago, like, you know, when we, when we do the elections, like, you know, provincial year, I voted for NDP. I deeply regret that, you know. What they did, like, you know, what they are steering the directions for this province and, like, you know, from the federal and provincial, it's way off course. Like, you know, it affects, like, what they, the decision that they make, it really affects our daily life. And for me, like, you know, I'm just a regular nobody. I don't believe anyone would notice me, right, like, you know, before this event. I'm just a regular citizen. Like, you know, on this usual Sunday for the past 30 years, like those long weekends, I usually stay at home, you know, have probably ha having a drink with my friends, playing PlayStation. But now, like you guys, we have to come out. Why is that? Why are we, like, you know, why are we like regular people we have to come out and protest? Because we find the urge, find the urge to speak up speak up with our voice out like let the politicians hear uh, what we want they like, request and want to warn them how dangerously they are steering our future and future of our kids to be i always look at my kids and my six-year-old daughter say what kind of future do i want to bring to you is it a future that you could only dream that you own a place or a dream that you can actually stay in the city or even to try to find a meal for for your dinner like you know this is something that we are actually like, you know troubling with right now we want everyone that you know to speak out and because we have the politicians right over here like you know the leaders the MLA, the candidates, right over here, you know, we as an individual, if I can host an event like this, so can you guys. Like, you know, don't ever think that your vote doesn't matter. It does. We have to come out and vote and participate. <laughs> and because, because the politicians that are here today, they listen to us. They want to get close to us. They bow down to us. They get in right close to us. You know, we we have this chance to listen to them. Okay. Before uh, going on, we also have one more speakers. Oh, actually, sorry, I got two more speakers. Okay. First, uh, I want to invite Dante. Please, Dante, coming up. Hey. Hello everyone, hope you can hear me clearly. I'm here, I'm honored to represent all the master's students living in Vancouver and BC and British Columbia and Canada. Uh, we are here because we are facing an inconsiderate policy change just like you. We are facing the current tax, we are facing some uh, kind of unrelated and unannounceable uh, uh, policy change. We are facing the PCBNB immigration program. This is why we're here, we are here to, to voice our hurt to let our voice to be heard. We are here because we are the future engineers, nurses, and doctors to support the country. We are here because we pay the high to sky expensive tuition fee and carbon tax and other things like that. But we, but our voice is being ignored. So we are here to let our voice to be heard. And it's only because we are standing in the same situation. We are standing to represent all the immigrants, we're standing to represent all the Asians live here, we're standing to represent all the students, 
to support the country. But the government and, BC, and the British Columbia and Victoria just ignore our needs. They just want us to accept a new policy right now and after January 2025. Uh, at that time, we are not graduated at that, at that time. So it's very important to let our voice to be heard. I understand you are facing very hard situation. I understand you, you, you are a react to high to sky expensive tuition fees, uh, rent and other things like that, uh, and carbon tax. We understand we are in the same situation, so we really need your help. We really need, really need your support to support us, to let our voice to be heard. And when you keep silence to such an inconsiderate policy change, it means that when the same thing happen in the future, uh, in your rest, in the rest of your life, it will be a mis it will be a catastrophe. So, uh, if anyone want to support us, we have volunteers here to represent our post about the BCPMP immigration program and the carbon tax. Uh, we really hope you can support us. Thank you very much for standing here to support us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is also one of the other issues that you know they have, right? Like. BC NDPs, when they make policies, you know, they usually only going skin deep. Uh, you know, they never think about the consequences that they have, uh, you know, when they are placing a ban on the interna international student. Like, the immigration that they have uh, is ridiculous because we are pushing out all the hard, like, you know, the workers that, you know, that's gonna be here to pay in our taxes you know, funding our facilities, right? And like, we were just pushing those peoples away. The people who might in future, like help build our cities. Because Canada is an immigrant country, like, you know. Myself, it's also an immigrant. So like, you know, we, we really hope, like, you know, when BC NDP, like, you know, <laughs> BC NDP, like, make their decisions, they would know, think it through. Okay, so the next speakers that we have, it's Phil. Feliz, Feliz. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I am Phyllis Tang. I was a former BC United writing president for Vancouver Fraser View the 2021 Federal Conservative Campaign Manager for Vancouver South, and the former Conservative Director of Outreach for Vancouver South. In 2018, I also ran for Vancouver City Council. In the next six years, I hope to be able to serve the residents of the City of Richmond and make a difference in the forming of the next municipal government. Now, after eight years of Trudeau, everything costs more. For many, their work income is not enough to pay for housing. And housing costs have doubled. And Trudeau now wants to hammer you with the April Fool's Day joke is on you with a carbon tax hike of 23%. And that is a part of a plan to quadruple the tax, which is going to kill jobs and force seniors to choose between eating or heating their homes. The Federal Conservatives and Pierre Polyever's team have moved a non-confidence motion to try to force a carbon tax election so that Canadians can make their own decisions. The federal conservatives think that lowering the cost of alternatives is better than raising the cost of traditional energy that we still need. We can engage in green light projects like nuclear power and hydroelectricity, tidal wave power, and carbon capture and storage so that Canadians can have an abundant supply of emission-free electricity and power. So here's the choice. Do we want to raise the price for traditional energy that we still need, like gas and home heating? Or do we want to lower the cost of low emitting alternatives? I believe the latter, and that is common sense. We also have the support of seven other premiers to axe the carbon tax. So let's axe the tax, axe the tax, axe the tax. Let's axe the tax, axe the tax. Now lastly, I'm also very concerned about the current government's development of Bill C-63, also known as the Online Harms Act, which would establish a new hate crime offense that would allow penalties of up to life imprisonment. 
the potential for misuse of Bill C-63 will stifle free speech. This act feels like a massive government overreach on privacy. And this means people's thoughts and words alone can be deemed enough for life imprisonment. We do need to pay close attention to this matter. I also want to thank you all, you amazing people, for coming out today to save our country, our province, and Richmond. Hope you have a very happy Easter weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, please. And our next speaker is Sheldon, who is the representative of Richmond Community Coalition. Oh, th thank you all for coming out today. Uh, City Councilor Chalk Al, he sends his regrets. He's not, he hasn't been able to get here. If he, if he shows up, I'll have him come up. Um, but we, we just want to stand here with the people of Richmond against this, this tax increase that has, that is, um, that's being imposed on all of us by Justin Trudeau, by David Eby. Two years ago, here in Richmond, Councillor Chalk Al and I organized a very similar petition against John Horgan's uh, fuel tax increase in 2022. And despite 1,600 signatures from people here in Richmond, the NDP still went ahead with that gas tax. We are the most we are one, we are the most heavy, heavily taxed jurisdiction in North America in terms of fuel taxes and all of that. This is ridiculous and we need to hold our NDP MLAs accountable in the next election. So I hope you all write to your MLAs and let them know. Um, here in Richmond, Chalk and Richmond Community Coalition have been always fighting against constant municipal tax increases year after year. It seems almost every year there's an annual municipal tax increase. And after the last election, Chalk Al was the only councillor that voted against it. Despite during the election, we heard so many politicians saying, we need to support businesses, we can't keep taxing people year after year. Um, so we need to elect politicians who realize that we can't treat taxpayers as a constant base for more revenue. The government has to constrain itself. It has to, it has to show its own restraint in these tough economic times. Uh, Richmond Community Coalition put out a press release earlier today as these taxes are going up, members of parliament have their salaries going up. Uh, Canadian MPs are now the second highest paid politician in the world, just after the United States. And we just think when times are tough, politicians should not be increasing taxes on taxpayers and raising their own salaries. That is unacceptable. So you can all demand better. There's many politicians here. I see John Rustad from the BC Conservatives. Kevin Falcon from the BC United. So to take advantage of the situation to ask them questions, ask them hard questions, where they stand on these taxes, on carbon taxes, on fuel taxes, on transit taxes, because it's important. Your vote matters and uh, everyone here is looking at, well, the politicians here are looking for votes. So um, please ask them questions. And thank you very much for coming out on Easter Monday, on a holiday where you should be with your families. You shouldn't have to be put through more financial, economic uh, burdens in, in these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Okay, without further ado, we're going to invite our first party, the BC United and their teams, to the stage. Yeah. On this one, we can all clap together. Thank you, my friends, for coming out today. And I'll tell you, it is great to be here in Richmond. And you know why I say that? Because this was the community that when David Eby said we were going to jam in a, a, a drug injection site into Richmond, this community stood up with one voice and said, no, not today, not ever in this community. And I want to congratulate all of you for having the courage to stand up. And that shows what happens when you get democratically involved and you express your opposition to government decisions. And so too, here we are on April the 1st. What a cruel April Fool's joke on the population of British Columbia to think 
that in, in, a, in a province that already has the highest gas taxes in North America, the highest housing prices in North America, the highest average rents in all of Canada, that David Eby and the NDP think this is the right time to increase the carbon tax by 23%. No way. It should be unacceptable. And all of us can agree on that. Now, before I get to some of my remarks and go into a bit of detail on that, I do want to recognize that I'm joined here by a number of my colleagues, both MLAs and candidates, and I want to quickly recognize them. If they just raise your hand quickly, I'm going to go through this uh, fairly quickly because I know we've got other speakers and I want to be respectful. Trevor Halford from Surrey South, Teresa Watt from Richmond North Center, Ian Payton from Delta South, Coralie Oaks all the way from the Caribou North, <laughs> Wendy Ewan from Richmond Center, and we've got Jackie Lee, a candidate for Richmond Steeds, and Michael Wu, a candidate for Burnaby North, Keenan Adams, a candidate from Port Coquitlam, Keenan, and Pavan Baya from Richmond, Queensboro. I want to thank all of them for joining us here today. So a little history. When the revenue neutral carbon tax was first introduced in 2008, it enjoyed widespread support, including from myself, my former colleagues, John Rustad and, and uh, others. Why? Because it was revenue neutral. It meant that by law, every dollar had to go towards back into your pockets in the form of lower personal income taxes, lower business taxes. It was a tax shift, not a tax grab. So what changed? What changed, my friends, is the NDP got elected in 2017. And the first thing they did in the very first budget they brought out is they got rid of their revenue neutrality. And they said, we're going to take all that money into government. And that's where they broke the social contract that the public had. And when they took all that money into government, they gave very little of it back. And just know this, that if you are earning over $59,000 a year, you get zero back on this carbon tax. And for families that are struggling in the most unaffordable province in BC, that is an unacceptable outcome. So what did we say? As, as long as two years ago, I said, first of all, we need to have relief on provincial fuel taxes. We've got some of the highest provincial fuel taxes in the country. A year ago, we said that not only would we fight NDP and David Eby's attempts to continue to increase the carbon tax, but that we, because it's a BC-made carbon tax, would remove it from home heating fuels, saving you whether you pay natural or you fuel your house by natural gas, propane, or oil. And we said we'd take it off of agriculture because we shouldn't be hitting our farmers, Ian Payton, our MLA from Delta South, who knows better, I saved you for the end, buddy, because he knows better than anyone else that our farmers are already hit with enough costs, and carbon tax just means they pass it along and our groceries get more expensive. Those are the kind of changes that can make a difference for folks. But we need to have leadership in government that says no. David Eby had an opportunity along with seven other premiers who were saying to the Prime Minister, no, please don't increase the carbon tax again. But here's what you need to know. Politicians also have to be honest with you. We cannot just say we're scrapping the carbon tax. You know why? Because within 24 hours, you get the federal carbon tax that comes right into place. And so what we have to do is say, what can we do? And that's why we say, get rid of provincial fuel taxes. It's totally separate from the carbon tax. It'd be 15 cents a liter in savings. Every time you fill up your vehicle, we can do that right away. And we will do that right away. Because it is time that we get leadership in this province that makes not only promises, but promises that we can follow through on. And I also said this, and I've said this to Pierre Polyev directly, that if Pierre becomes the next premier of the, or prime minister of this country and follows through on his commitment to eliminate the federal carbon tax, the provincial carbon tax is gone too. Because we're not going to be the only jurisdiction with a carbon tax in this country. So my friends, I want to thank you for coming out. And remember this. Your voice does matter. Your voice matters. Don't ever believe that individuals cannot make a difference. Because when individuals rise up and say we are fed up and we are tired of being the highest tax jurisdiction in the country, we're tired of the 32 new and increased taxes that David Eby has imposed on British Columbians in the last seven years, and we're tired of having to struggle to meet family budgets. That's when we stand up and say, no more, no way, no how. Thank you for coming out today, and thank you for all our friends that are fighting this important fight.
呃、大家好，呃、我哋係 B C 聯合黨前 B C 自由黨嘅，我哋嘅黨警馮怡幹 Kevin Falcon 頭先已經同大家講咗，我哋今日點解要出嚟呢度誒作呢個大嘅集會呢？就係、是、因為今日四月一號唔係愚人節嚇，四月一號尹大衛同省新民主黨將碳税加到百分之二十三。我哋已經民不聊生啊，百上加斤。如果再繼續加落去呢，我哋真係會個個都唔可以再生活。所以希望大家一定要 say no， 一定話反對碳税，而且我哋仲要取消燃油税。OK， 多謝大家出席，多謝。OK，Thank、okay, you, Kevin, and thank you for BC United. Now, next, we're gonna invite John Rasta and uh, the BC Conservative to come up and say. Woo! Woo! All right, everyone. Thanks very much. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to be able to be here today. It's great to be able to be in Richmond and to have talk about such an important topic. I just want to add to all the team we have behind us here. These are all of our candidates that we have from right across the valley. People out from Chilliwack, from Abbotsford, <clears throat> right through, of course, from Surrey, here in Richmond, uh, right through the, the whole area that have come out. And they've come out for the same reason that all of you are here. We want to see the, our carbon tax be axed. We need to ax the yeah. carbon tax. Yeah. And you know, there's something else going on too that I just want to quickly mention because I, I'm really proud of the people that we have and the people running our party. And this month in particular is actually <clears throat> Sikh Heritage Month. And I just want to recognize that because there's so many people from all walks of life, from right across, you know, the, the globe that have come here to form their lives here in British Columbia, to be able to appreciate what we have as a culture, to be able to add to our culture, to be able to appreciate freedoms in this province, to be able to grow and to be able to have a family. And I can tell you, one of the big challenges that we have right now is affordability. I hear it from everybody. We heard it from the students here today who spoke. How can they build a house? How can they expect to raise a family and put away for the future? Life is just way too unaffordable. <clears throat> the carbon tax by itself, by 2030, will have added of the cost of about $27,000 out of the pockets of a family of four. That is completely unacceptable, and that's why we are committed to getting rid of this carbon tax. It is unaffordable, it hurts everything we do, it hurts our economy, it hurts our food production, it hurts everything that we do in terms of shopping. This makes no sense to have this in place. And I can tell you this, <clears throat> you know, I was part of the government that brought it in, and I can tell you, I wasn't proud when I brought in the carbon tax. It was something that had to be brought in at the time. But I can tell you, I am very proud to stand here today and say that I will be axing the carbon tax. Yes. And you can see... Yeah. Yeah. The Conservative Party of British Columbia government, you will see in, the, in the, uh, the first budget that we introduce, you will see the carbon tax being eliminated out of British Columbia. We are committed to it, we're going to make it happen, and we're going to fight back against yeah. Ottawa. And we're the only party, quite frankly, in British Columbia that's committed to doing that. When you look at across the country, we got provinces across the country that are refusing to pay the carbon tax. They're pushing back. We can't be soft on this. We've got to push hard. We've got to make sure that we have things in place. We've got to make sure, of course, we've got change in Ottawa to get rid of that problem that we have there. And as soon as that happens, I can tell you, the carbon tax will be coming off the people of this province. There's so much else, though, that needs to be thought about. and, and you know, I'm glad it was mentioned, um, uh, Sheldon mentioned it and others um, as well as well as Kevin mentioned it, and that is the issue of uh, safe supply and decriminalization and what is going on here. I was actually really happy to see that Richmond did push back. We were part of that. We, we, we pushed back. We were committed on it. We went out and we uh, engaged with people across the, across the community because I look at this sort of thing and I think, you want to be able to raise your, community, your children in a safe community. You want to be able to raise your children in an environment that you know, you don't have to wonder what's going on. You don't have to worry about, you know, needles and everything else happening everywhere. The idea of putting a safe injection site in a hospital, it's just ludicrous to me. You've got people in the hospital that are trying to recover from addiction. And what do they see? They see people coming in there doing drugs. How difficult is that for people to be able to help overcome their addictions? 
it doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm just so glad that the people pushed back and then the city council had to reverse this. But I can tell you there's something else that we will do as the Conservative Party of British Columbia. We will end safe supply, we'll end decriminalization, yeah. and we'll make sure We'll make sure that there's a solid path to recovery for people, not just continually perpetuating this, the, the drugs and the addiction. There's so many other things I want to talk about, and, and uh, you know we're going to have lots of fun. I think you know coming up on election year, <clears throat> and I'm really pleased to see you know so many people here and people from the other parties, because ultimately this is about you and democracy. This is about choice. You need to be able to understand what people stand for, what people are that are straight up and willing to be honest about exactly what they're going to do and why they're going to do it. That is what you'll see from the Conservative Party of British Columbia. And that's why I say I'm so pleased with all the candidates that we have here today, with the people that are running, the diversity that we have in our party, bringing forward these ideas, fighting so hard for their own writings, fighting hard to represent the people in the province because I believe strongly in democracy. What we're seeing in, in British Columbia right now with David Eby and his government is an affront to democracy. They're coming in and dictating overruling uh, municipal governments, they're overruling you know, community plans, they're overruling and saying you don't even get an opportunity for public input and things like housing. This is not the right approach. We need to be able to make sure we strengthen democracy, that we support communities, and that we solve these problems working together, not from an authoritarian approach. So the Conservative Party of British Columbia, I can tell you, we are committed every day to be able to work with you, to be able to work with communities, to make sure that we can make life affordable, to make sure that we are addressing your concerns. Because you want to be able to buy a house, you want to be able to raise your children, you want to be able to make sure that you've got your know, food on the table. <clears throat> Those are the priorities that we have as a government, and we will never forget that you are going to be at the center of every decision we make as the Conservative Party of British Columbia. Thanks again for coming out, everybody. It was great to be able to be here. And I'm going to pass this over to my good friend and colleague, Bruce Batman, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the next Premier of British Columbia, John Rickett. So i got a few questions to ask you. Is the healthcare system any better? No. no. Is crime on the streets any better? No. Is anything any better? No. There's only one party that's within the ability to beat the NDP. We're within five points of doing that. There's only one party that said they would get rid of the carbon tax. Don't be fooled twice. That's the Conservative Party of British Columbia. We'll axe the tax. A round of applause for John Rutherford. And we have candidates from all over the province. It would take me probably an hour to introduce them all. They're from every corner. We have people coming that want to be part of this movement. There is a blue wave coming across the province of British Columbia. And you're all going to be part of that. Once again, a round of applause for John Rustad, the next Premier of British Columbia. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see over here, we actually have booths set up right beside our uh, stage. Those are like, you know, if you are interested in connecting with uh, the representative from your writings, right, please grab the information and get to talk with the candidates. And even like, you know, if you got a chance to talk to Kevin and Zhang, like, you know, personally, and get to meet them, get to know them, and then make your own decisions. This is a democratic society. And now we have to make the right choice this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great rally, great turnout, and a lot of enthusiasm for the Conservative Party of BC. Exactly. Yeah, any comment about the rally? 
Oh yeah, just like a really great turnout and a lot of support for the Conservative Party and a lot of just support against the carbon tax because it's just making everybody poor and it's not really doing anything. So, really good event today. Exactly. So, Stephen Froelich from uh, Coquitlam Burke Mountain. I know. It there. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, any comment about the rally, Bruce? Well, you know, I think it's great grassroots. You can tell once again that this April Fool's joke is not funny. People are going to literally take it up the tailpipe at the pumps. They're going to be hurting. It's going to be tougher to put food on the table. And trust me, your grocery bills are going to end up getting higher because the because the carbon tax gets added on top of everything. And you got to pay GST on top of it to add insult to injury. There's only one party that said they'd get rid of it. And that is the Conservative Party of British Columbia. So a vote for anyone else is just a vote for the carbon tax. 